Welcome to Watch Me Code. Over the past few months, I've spent quite a bit of time learning and working with ES6 and the new features in ES6. And I know I haven't covered all of them yet, but I've covered quite a few features that I'm already using in my day-to-day -day application development. And specifically, I'm using these features within my browser-based applications, which, as most of you would guess, I'm still writing Backbone.js applications. And I found that there's a couple of tricks that I've needed to do in order to really make an effective workflow for building ES6 applications for a browser at this point. It's not a completely seamless thing yet, because frankly, most browsers don't support most of the ES6 features that we want to use. So there's a few things that we need to do. And you've seen some of these things already throughout the Watch Me Code episodes that are covering ES6 topics. So I want to take some time now and really dig into getting your process set up for an application so that you can have a good workflow to build ES6-based applications for your browser. To get started, I've got a really simple empty Express application set up here, and I've got a number of dependencies installed for Grunt. I've got uh, Grunt, of course, and then there's Grunt Babel, which is going to compile our ES6 code for us. There's Grunt Browserify, which we're going to use for modules. There's also some other stuff related to just running general Grunt tasks, like cleaning folders out, concatenating files, running JS hint, which I always find to be very important in my code, uh, a watcher so that we can do things when files change, and then grunt sass as well, which is something that I've never really talked about before, but I'm using a lot these days. So having installed all of these, I also have a grunt file that is loading these tasks into the grunt file itself. And as you can see, I've got a lot of stuff already written in here that I've commented out. And truth be told, this is mostly copy and paste from an actual live project that I built, uh, one that I demoed previously for that, that I'm building for a client. I showed that in one of my previous episodes of Watch Me Code. And I'm doing this, th I'm doing things this way so that I don't spend too much time trying to just write all of these arcane object literals for Grunt to work appropriately. I just want to get things done by commenting things out, but I want to kind of show you the flow of getting to the point where you actually need all of these different pieces. In addition to that, I've got a pretty extensive file layout already. If you've watched my previous episodes of Watch Me Code that cover Express.js, you should recognize this basic layout of the file system where I have a lib folder that will contain parts of the Node.js application that I'm going to run. Um, in this case, I don't really have anything in there. I did this for illustrative purposes. Um, Node modules, of course, you know what that is. Then there's the www folder, which contains the actual web application. And I've got my package.json sitting outside of the web folder, and then the web application itself sitting inside the web folder, of course. There's the bin folder with www to execute the actual express application and start it up, the app.js file, etc. Within this, I also have an app folder. And within this app folder, I have an assets folder with all of the different assets that I'm going to be using inside of my application. Now, you may be wondering why I have all these assets over here. What's going on with this? Why would I have an app folder in here and have assets here? And this is because with the way I build applications these days, I don't necessarily want all of Backbone and Bootstrap and Font Awesome and everything else in my application. I'm going to have an application folder from which I build things. I'm going to take files out of this app assets and build them into a single file that can be appropriately delivered to the client side application and run from there. There's going to be more folders inside of this app folder here in a few minutes, but for now, I've got some of my static assets like Backbone and Bootstrap and a few other things like that. So I want to start there with my grunt file. Now I know a lot of people 
get kind of purist about having all of your application infrastructure and vendor related files required into your application through whatever module format you're using. If you're using CommonJS, using the require statement. If you're using ES6 modules, using the import statement. And I can understand that. You know, it's you, you want to keep code clean. But I'm more of a, I, I guess, practical uh, person in this particular case where I know globals are bad. We don't want to pollute the global namespace with a whole lot of stuff. And we should you know, import files whenever we need them and all that. But there's there's a part of me that's like, you know what? We spent years building applications with nothing but globals. They're not always a bad thing. Sometimes it's okay to use them. And so I tend to do this with my infrastructure stuff. Things like underscore JS and backbone JS and jQuery and Marionette and Bootstrap and you know, all these things that I use on a regular basis that I just don't want to have to import them into every single source file that I'm using. And so I take the approach of concatenating these files together into a single infrastructure.js file. And I'll have that infrastructure.js you know, load once in the browser so that the browser can cache it and reload it as needed. And then I'll have a separate application file where I write all of my real code for my application and I use modules and imports and all of those good techniques that we're supposed to, but still allowing the use of Backbone or jQuery or Marionette as a global variable within those modules, because frankly, I don't really see a problem doing that. So the first thing we're gonna uncomment inside of my grunt file is this concat task. And this concat task is gonna be responsible for building the infrastructure.js that I just talked about. And it's going to produce a file in the, in the web folder, public assets infrastructure. So if I go back over to my file browser here, we can see that I've got my web folder, public, and I don't have assets in here. This is, these are kind of the defaults that come with Express.js, and I'm gonna delete those. So I'm gonna create um, my assets. Well, you know what? I don't even want to, no, I do want an assets folder in here. I was going to say I don't need an assets folder, but I do want an assets folder. Otherwise, everything in here would just be served off the root of the website. And that looks odd to me when I see that source, when I try to get things out of the web application, it makes routing a little bit funky. So if I do a public slash assets here, then I'll be able to build an infrastructure.js. And since I've uncommented this concat here and told it which files I want to concatenate into this destination, I can run this grunt file now. I do have this loaded up into grunt already. I don't have my default set up yet, which I'll do later. But I can save this and I can run grunt concat. And looks like I have an error here. Cannot find module. Ah, I know what I did wrong. I have this left over from previous application. I'm just gonna go ahead and change that real quick. So I've created this public assets infrastructure.js file now, and I can see that here this is going to contain everything, JSON2 and Backbone and jQuery and Marionette and all that. And at 377k, you know, it's a pretty big file. Maybe you want to run a minifier on that, get rid of all those comments and everything. I'm not really worried about that right now. Frankly, I don't even really worry about it that much in production. You know, if you're talking about the difference between 350k and 250k for these file sizes, who cares? You've got megs worth of images in your site already. I don't think an extra 100k for a JavaScript file with comments and formatting is going to really make or break the speed of the application. So now that I have that, what's next? I, I want to build an application that is based on ES6 features. And so to do that, I've got this app folder where I want to put all of my actual application source files. And this is where I'm gonna build my backbone application, basically. I'm gonna have 
uh, something in here, that, an index.js or, or whatever, in order to actually build this. And I need to restart Vim, I think. There's a bit of a... Well, this is weird. Oh, here we go. Didn't need to restart it at all. I just wasn't looking in the right folder. So I've got this web, web application folder and then this app folder, like I mentioned a moment ago. And inside of here, I want to put my actual application. Uh, and since this is a demo application, there's no real production use for what I'm going to do. I'm not going to build something full featured. I'm just going to do something simple. Um, but I, I do know that I am going to run Babel on this. And there's a couple of things that I need inside of this additional app folder. I just need to reference my grunt file real quick. So what I'm going to do inside of this app folder is create another subfolder called source. And this is going to be where I write all of the actual ES6 based code. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to build my index.js and it's going to import other files for other purposes. And all of this is going to happen inside of this source folder. Once I have code written, I need a build folder to output all of the source compiled by Babel.js so that I can have a version of this code that is able to run in current browsers. Because as you probably know, hopefully know by now, Babel is going to take the ES6 code and transform it into ES5 or ES4 or ES whatever so that it can be used in current browsers. So now I have my source folder and I have an ES6 build folder inside of here. So back in Vim, we can see the same folders. I'm going to go ahead and edit web app source index.js. And in here, like I said before, I don't really care about having globals or not. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in, um, excuse me for a second, just refreshing that. I'm going to go ahead and put in a marionette application object. So I'm going to say var app equals new marionette dot application. And I'm going to have an app dot add regions. And I'll add one called main, which will point to the main content area on the screen. Instead of doing an exports right here, I'm going to take advantage of what Browserify can do for me. And I'm going to say global.app equals app. I think it's global. It's either global or underscore global. But I think it's just global.app equals app. And by doing this, I'll be able to reference the actual application object inside of a view where I can where I can get to this. So I have, for example, if I put block JavaScript inside of my Jade file here, I can have app.start. Or more realistically, I can put my jQuery function call for DOM load or DOM ready, and then inside of there, put app.start. I also need to have my main div down here. So now I have what is basically a very small marionette application that actually doesn't really do anything yet, so it's not really that useful. But I want to go ahead and start getting things rolling. I know I have the stuff in the source file here. And I know I need to get it into this ES6 build using Babel. And then from there, I need to run Browserify in order to get modules concatenated and built together. And you know what? Before we do that, I suppose let's go ahead and put in a simple view. Let's say import some view from dot slash some view. Just so we can have some ES6 code in here. And I'll go ahead and edit web app source some view.js. So once I have this particular file open and I turn off all the stupid notifications on my phone, I can do something like var 
my view equals mirror unit dot item view dot extend and in here I'll say export default my view my template I'm gonna have some template here let's go ahead and give this a template inside of our application I'll put it inside the same block JavaScript because why not script type equals text dash template and I'll have h2 this is my a template and then from here I'll have a paragraph and say isn't this the coolest thing ever and ignore the formatting here this is because I'm using a script tag but this is still going to be valid jade syntax at this point all right so now I have my index and my sum view my sum view is exporting the module I'm going to say app dot on start and I'll use an ES6 function of course an arrow function I'll say var sum view equals new sum view and then I'll say app dot main dot show some view all right so now I have a couple of ES6 things going on here I've got an arrow function I've got module import and a module export at this point it probably makes a little more sense to get something up and running so that my application here will actually be able to use it so what I need to do is go back to my grunt file and start by uncommenting Babel right here now I am having Babel produce source maps for me uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to use those or not but I, I just want to build them anyways at least for now maybe for production I'll take those out um, for my application build though this is where it gets a little bit interesting normally when you specify files right here you end up with a single key value pair it's a source file and a destination file and it it looks it, it gets to be a little bit difficult when you look at the examples that Babel has on their website uh, you'll see you know destination as the left hand side and source as the right hand side but grunt itself allows you to do this expand version of single source and destination so instead of having to manually list all of these files it's gonna go ahead and build everything that it that it finds inside of this application folder that I've specified the web app source it's gonna find all of the JavaScript files in there and it's gonna produce them in the web app build all right so that's gonna be my Babel setup so now if I run grunt Babel, let's see what happens. That looks like it built without errors. Let's see if it actually produced any output. And again, I'm looking for the web app build. Oops, I think that's the wrong folder. I think I wanted ES6 build. Yeah, okay. So it looks like it did work, but I got the wrong folder name in there. And that's important because later we're gonna use that same folder name for a few other tasks. All right, so I now have my ES6 build where we have the index.js file that was created and we have the sumview.js that was also created. And we can see through the little preview over here that some changes have been made. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there that I didn't do because Babel is compiling this for me and turning it into code that my browser will be able to use. Well, almost. My browser can't actually reference this web app file folder structure right here. There's, there's nothing here for it to get to. I can't get stuff from the ES6 build right here directly into my browser. Even if I could, I don't want to because there's a lot of stuff in here that just isn't going to work appropriately given the current state of things. For example, this module.exports in some view and this require right here inside of the index.js those are things that my browser doesn't understand and as I showed in the episode on ES6 modules and compiling them for a browser 
we can use something like Browserify to turn these ES6 or these uh, uh, require statements into something that my browser actually can use. So now this is where it gets to be important between the destination of the ES6 build and the next step in this process. So I'm going to enable Browserify by uncommenting the Browserify section right here. And again, I have this debug. I want to change that to true real quick. So this is where it gets, this is where we're going to get to the point where we can actually take code from the ES6 build and move it to a place where the browser will be able to get to it because the browser is only going to be able to get things out of this public folder, not from inside of this app source or app ES6 build. And there's a specific reason that I'm doing this and you'll see why here in a couple of minutes. So let's go ahead and get Browserify running. So I have an output on the left hand side, web app, public, assets, app.js. And the source of that is going to be web app, app, ES6 build, app.js, which is actually incorrect. This is actually going to be index.js, not app.js right there. That's fine. All right, so index.js has my source. What this is going to do is take this ES6 build, this index.js, and it's going to start running Browserify on it. And Browserify is going to see this require, and it's going to go ahead and pull in some view for me. So I don't have to specify some view.js inside of Browserify here. Through the require statement, that will happen for me. Now that I have this in place, I can run Browserify. I can run grunt Browserify. And hopefully this will work. It looks like it did work. Let's check it out. So back in my Explorer window here, Finder window, sorry. Old Windows habits die hard, I guess. I have my app, ES6 build, that's fine. But now I have my public assets, app.js. And here we have the Browserify output of everything with source map built into it way down there at the bottom. So now I should be able to go back into my views and I do need to adjust this to add a block JavaScript because I didn't do that previously. And I can see that I have a block JavaScript which will, ah, I know what I need to do. I need to script source equals slash assets slash app.js to load that. We can see that I do have an app.js here in my public assets. And then this app.start is going to be the actual application object that I'm exporting as my global.app right here. So I can save all of this. I need to start up my browser, my server, whatever. I'm going to say web bin www. That will start up the actual browser app. I can hit refresh. The style has changed a little bit, which I expected. Unexpected. Uncaught reference. Marionette is not defined. Dollar sign is not defined. Ah, it's because I have not loaded in my infrastructure JS. So assets, infrastructure JS. And this comes back to what I was talking about earlier about, you know, frankly, I don't really care that I have global variable references for things like Backbone or Marionette. That's not a huge concern to me. So here we go. Now we're getting a little bit further along. I'm missing the styles.css because I moved it. I don't really care. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that out of my layout. I'll just comment that out with Jade. All right. Now I'm missing some template. That's fine. I forgot to give this an ID. So script number some template. There we go. Refresh that again and look, there we go. We now have a marionette application starting up and rendering out a template into the DOM at this point. Now this is all well and good. I technically have ES6 code being built into ES5 code with Babel and then using Browserify to output this app.js file. But this is obnoxious. I don't want to have to rerun all of these manual steps, and I really don't have to, 
because we have Grunt available to do all of this heavy lifting for us. I'm going to come down here and start by uncommenting this default task, which is going to run concat in order to concatenate my infrastructure file. And then it's going to run watch. And watch is going to be where the real magic happens in this case. You can see that watch does a number of different things here. I'm going to start with, well, I don't really care about SAS, quite honestly. I'm going to start with my infrastructure, and then my app, and then I'll get to this reloader in a few moments. So the infrastructure is what I previously had. I don't care about calling that specifically subtask. The infrastructure is what I previously showed for my infrastructure.js file. It, it's where Backbone and Marionette and everything is. All I'm really doing here is saying, if I do change any of my infrastructure files, you know, go ahead and rebuild the infrastructure for me. This doesn't happen very often, so I don't really pay attention to this that much. I do want to make sure that I have the appropriate folder structure in there. So it's web, app, assets, and these are where my assets are. That's great. If I change any of the JS files, it's going to run concat for me. What I really care about is this app, Watch, watching the app itself, watching my backbone marionette application code. And I don't have a clean task yet. I'm going to delete this. I don't have a JS hint task yet, but I do have Babel and Browserify. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to see that I have this index.js, and I have this output, and I have the output going into this app.js. So what I want to have happen is I want Grunt to take care of this whole build process for me. So when I modify any file inside of this source folder, I want it to I want it to recompile the application for me. And this will do that. This this watch task with this app configuration right here will do exactly that for me. So I'm going to kill my, oops, I didn't mean to kill that. I'm going to kill Grunt real quick. Well, I guess it, Grunt wasn't running. So I'm going to run Grunt with my default task now, which is going to, first of all, rebuild the infrastructure, just in case I added anything new in between the last time that I started this application and didn't, and now. And then it's going to run Watch, and it's sitting there waiting. Now I can come back into the source, and I can do... Something like, well, let's change, oh, I don't know. Let's just do a console.log in here, just for fun. Console.log, the app was started. No big deal. Uh, I'm gonna, okay, I have my console open. So I'm gonna save that, go back to my command line, and we can see Grunt doing things now. It found that change, so it ran my Babel build, and then it ran my Browserify build as well. So inside of Grunt, it ran Babel, and then it ran Browserify, which means that my app.js got changed. The ES6 build was output for me, and we can look at the ES6 build and verify that my console.log is there. Now we can come down to the public assets app.js, and again, verify the actual final output that the browser can load. Here is the change that I made. So I can go back to my browser and hit refresh. And again, we see the template being rendered. And now we see the console.log that I put in there previously. But we're not done yet. There's some more things that I do want in here. First of all, I don't like having to manually refresh the browser. So I'm going to use this reloader option or task here inside of Grunt Watch. And this is going to look for any change to a Jade view, any change to as any assets for CSS that I have, and any change to any assets for JavaScript that I have inside of the public folders here. And it's important that I'm doing this inside of the web public assets, because I don't want this reloader to run when I change the source. I have Babel and Browserify running when I change the source of the application over here. In this case, what I want is when the final output, when the final output of this application build changes, that is the public assets app.js or CSS or whatever, whenever any of this changes, 
then use Live Reload to automatically reload my browser. So I'm going to save that, restart Grunt, head over to my browser, and go ahead and click the Live Reload button there. If you're not familiar with Live Reload, check out some previous episodes of Watch Me Code and you'll learn all about that. Or just hit the Live Reload website and find that plugin. It's pretty awesome. Okay. Now, I have my view, I have some template, I have this index. You know what, I don't need this console.log here anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I'm going to go right back to my browser, and a moment later, the browser refreshed for me, and that console.log is gone. So now we're talking, we're looking at a pretty slick little ES6 build process at this point in time. But still, there's a couple of more things that we want to do. For example, I want to have good code. I don't want to just have ES6 code. So I want to have JS hint involved to make sure that my code is well formed and has all the right semicolons and commas and everything else. So I've got a JS hint file, a JS hint RC already set up, and I have ES next enabled inside of here along with a bunch of other options. So in this grunt config file now, I'm using that JS hint RC and I'm running JS hint against the application source, not the ES6 build, not the public assets build, but the actual source that comes from web app source right here. So I am going to run JS hint over this code and we can see JS hint working if we take out a few things, a couple of commas or whatever we want to do in order to screw this code up. So this is not technically screwed up, but the way I have JS hint configured, it'll throw a, an error at me because it wants those semicolons to be there. So I've changed my grunt file. I've saved all of that. I'm going to restart grunt. And I'm going to make sure that, oh, I didn't need to restart grunt yet. What I meant to do was go back into my watch and in my infrastructure, well, not my infrastructure, in my application task for watch, the first thing I want to do is run JS hint. All right, so now, whenever, whenever I change any of the source files, I'm going to run JS hint, which is going to validate the source files for me. All right, so now let's restart Grunt again. Now I'm going to go back into here, into this index file. I've already removed the semicolons here. I'm going to save this again, go back to the console, and we can see, hey, look, this is bad. There's missing semicolons here. That's great, because now we have ES6 in place and we have JSLint in place telling us whether or not we're using our code correctly. Problem is, if I refresh this, I still see that there is you know, code here. I, there's, it's, it's running even though it failed the actual build. And I don't like that in my, in my builds. If I accidentally break the build and I go over here to my browser and I refresh, I, I won't know that I broke the build because I'm not looking at the command line output, the grunt output to see that it's broken. So I'm gonna come back into grunt and I'm going to enable this clean task here. And the clean task is going to look at the um, uh, excuse me, the clean task is going to be responsible for cleaning out folders whenever I do a build. So before I do a, any given build, I'm just going to go ahead and wipe out a couple of particular, a, a few files so that if I do have a mistake, when my browser refreshes, it's not going to work appropriately. So I'm going to start by cleaning out the public, the web public assets app.js file. And this is the actual final output of the, the build right here. So once again, I'm going to come down to the watch on the app, and this will be the first thing that I do is clean out the app file. Clean app. So now when I restart grunt, Come back in here, save this again. I see that I still have those errors. And when I refresh this, 
app is not defined. It couldn't find my app.js. I, well, I didn't even need to refresh this because I have live reload doing that for me. But I now see, hey, look, there's something wrong with my application. It, it didn't do things appropriately. It's, it's gone. There's, there's nothing there. That's not good. So now I have some indication that I need to go back to my command line and look to see what happened. And in this case, oh, sure, okay, I'm missing some semicolons. So let's go ahead and fix those semicolons. Save that, go back to my browser. And a moment later, it refreshes for me because of live reload, and everything is good to go again. So now we're looking at a pretty darn slick piece of functionality here. And I, I do have this SAS information here, but frankly, I'm not going to cover SAS right now. That's a, a completely different subject for another time, which is fine. But there is one more thing that I want to show you, and this is something that took me a while to figure out. And that is, what happens when you move a file into a folder of the same name? So let me, let me demonstrate something for you real quick. I'm going to come back into my index.jade and I'm going to copy this sum template into a modified template. And I'm going to make a couple of changes right here. This is a modified template. Isn't this the most awful thing ever? And here's why I want to do that. If I save all this right now, refresh, you know, everything is, is currently running the way it has been running. So now let's say, oh, I realize that my application, excuse me, I realize that my application shouldn't have this sum view as a, an individual file. This should be a whole module all in and of itself. And I want to represent that in my file system by having a sum view folder with an index.js file. In there. So I'm going to come in here and create the sum view folder and I'm going to move this file in here and rename it to index.js. If you're familiar with the way modules work in uh, required um, in CommonJS or in ES6 modules, you'll know that renaming this file or rename creating a folder with the same name as the file and then putting an index.js in here pretty much means I can use this same code. It's going to look at this and see this is either sumview.js or it's sumview slash index.js. That's just the way modules work. It's pretty slick, quite honestly. I really like the way that works. So I've changed this. I've got my folder, my file in a new folder. I know I need to change this. I'm going to change this to some modified template which is what I previously named over here, some modified template. I'm going to save all this, go back to my browser, and it refreshes for me appropriately. That's great, except uh, where's my changes? So that's, I mean, I, I did change this, right? I went in and I have some modified template, and I modified the contents right here. I mean, Maybe it just didn't pick that up. I don't know what's going on. Let's try changing this some more. See if this refreshes. It's, I mean, it's just not working. What? Well, okay. As it turns out, there's a little bit more going on behind the scenes than we realized. If you look in this ES6 build folder, you'll see that there is a sumview.js and a sumview folder at this point with a whole bunch of extra junk in here from when I was copying and pasting stuff in the file system. And this is causing problems. The require system, the import system in modules or require system in CommonJS sees both a sumview.js right here and a sumview folder with an index.js and the first one that wins is the file. So sumview.js is going to be the thing that gets pulled in instead of the updated and modified index.js in the sumview folder. That's a problem. We don't want this sumview.js anymore because that doesn't exist anymore in our actual application. It's gone. We're using the sumview folder and the index.js. So what do we do? 
while we add in a little bit more configuration inside of Grunt. And inside of this clean task in Grunt, this is where we do things. So we're going to have clean ES6 build. And the files that it's going to clean out is going to be the web. Uh, make sure I get the right folder structure here. Web app ES6 build. We're just going to clean out this entire folder structure at this point. So I save that. I need to come back down here. And instead of just cleaning the app, I'm going to clean everything. I'm going to clean both the app and the ES6 build whenever I change anything, anything inside of the application. So now I'll restart Grunt. I'll come back over to my source. I'll modify this again. Well, I don't really need to modify any of this, but I'll go ahead and just write this, go back to my browser, and there's all of the changes that I made. So what's happening now is we'll go back over to my folder structure here and hit refresh, and we can see that the ES6 build no longer has that someview.js file. No longer has the someview.js inside of the someview folder either from when I was doing copy and paste. I now only have someview slash index.js, which is appropriate because that's what I have in my actual source structure right here. So now I've got a pretty darn good looking structure here for my ES6 applications. I've shown how I can use ES6 features like the arrow functions and the imports and exports for modules. I've got a pretty rock solid build going on with Grunt over here as well. Every time I change any of the source application for my browser, it will re rebuild with Babel and then recompile the modules with Browserify into a final output in this file right here. And then Grunt Watch will see that that file changes and it will tell Express to automatically reload the application for me. It's a pretty slick setup if you ask me. I've been using this for a couple of months now for client applications and I'm really liking the way that this works. And if you want to know more about ES6 itself, well, go ahead and head on over to watchmecode.net and you'll find quite a bit of episodes around watchmecode. Just click on screencast right here, type in ES6, and you'll see a fair number of episodes covering all of the different topics that I've shown you for ES6 and far more than that as well. There's a lot out here. So be sure to check out watchmecode.net for ES6 and get your ES6 on because it is the standard now, even though not all browsers support it yet. Hopefully with this kind of a workflow and setup in your application though, you'll be able to use ES6 features in your browser applications today instead of having to wait for every single browser out there to come up with support for all of the features that you want. Thanks for watching and happy JavaScripting. Thank you.